Hello and welcome to This Time Africa, right here in the studios of Africa Today. And of course, I'm your host, Sia Matilda Banga. As you know, This Time Africa is the platform where we showcase African men, African women, our beauty, our culture, politicians, emerging leaders, everything in the dish, right here on This Time Africa. But the question always is, what's on this time? Yes, today our clock faces Sierra Leone, where I speak with a very, not only beautiful woman, but also a woman that wears many hearts. And I'm speaking today to Rosalind Bangura. Rosalind Bangura is the president of the Tegloma um, organization in Washington, D.C. And not only that, she is the CEO of B. Rose Children's Foundation. Not only that, she's a real estate agent. She is a woman that carries a lot of people behind her. Welcome to the show, Rose. Thank you so much, Matilda. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I am so glad that we could make it. Finally. <laughs> Tagloma Association. You know, I've been in the Washington DC area for a while and I've been hearing about Tagloma Association, but I am so honored that you could come because I want to know and probably all the listeners to understand what is Tagloma Association or organization? Well, Tagloma was founded um, about 45 years ago right here in the DMV area. Um, it was originally founded so we can actually help Sierra Leoneans that were having difficulties. It started with um, having difficulty when a Sierra Leonean passed away. Back in those days, we had to take the bodies back home. So because of that, they wanted the guys and a few women came together and said, okay, we cannot get the Sierra Leone embassy to assist us, so let us come together and see how best we can send these bodies back home and just looking out for each other. They also started helping themselves out with immigration issues. When one person would get arrested because they didn't have papers, mm. they would all come together and put money together and um, pay for legal fees. Wow. So the organization was really, the foundation the organization was built on was to make sure they took care of each other. Wow. My brother and my sister's keeper. I was about to say that, that being uh, one another's keeper. That's amazing. So Tegloma has been around for what, 40, 40, for 45 years. Um, there are currently about 23 chapters around the United States, okay. um, London, and also in um, Canada. And there's also a chapter in Sierra Leone as well. So currently, as we speak, we have an umbrella organization, which is the Tagloma Federation, okay. that monitors the activities of the local chapters. Wow, that's amazing. So um, in the DMV area or other areas, probably um, in the United States, there are many organizations like yours. So how does your differ? What's your objective that sets you apart? Well, one of the things that sets us apart is one, the fact that um, Tagoma has been around for a very long yeah, time. Yeah, so it has been tested. And um, so we have been there for people. We've been able to do a lot of burials for people who just do not have life insurance hmm. of some sort. We also give scholarships to children in Sierra Leone. Wow. Um, right now, as I speak to you, Tagoma has a five acre land in the city of Bo, wow. that they're planning on putting a multi-purpose center. Wow, that's good. Um, so they do a lot of different things to um, promote the culture, mm -hmm. to also promote Sierra Leone as a whole. Um, they also try to also assist a lot of people with um, different things. Like for example, when the Ebola outbreak came, Tagloma, Washington DC was the first to respond and give um, aid to the people of Sierra Leone um, and to be there for them. Wow, I must applaud you guys. You're doing a great job. So how do you, how, how do you go about getting your membership? What's the membership of Tegloma? Well, the membership of Tegloma is 
it ranges because every chapter is responsible for their own. Okay. Like right now, I am the youngest president of the organization. And I'm going to get to that. <laughs> so um, because I'm the youngest president, I'm always trying to cajole young people because as you know, because Tagloma is over 45 years old, majority of our members are over the age of 60. Okay. So we need to bring young people in that can continue the legacy. It's a cultural organization. We want to keep our culture. We want to make sure our children, even though a lot of them are now born here in the United States, that they know the culture and they know where their parents come from. Wow. Talking about culture, um, it's a cultural organization. What's the meaning of Tegloma? And also, just the second part to the question is um, membership. Does it cut across tribal lines? So when Tegloma originally was founded, it was founded for the Mende people. Okay. Because at that time... And the Mendes pr pr predominantly come, come from, from the, the south the and south the east. And the east of Sierra Leone. And the okay. east of Sierra Leone. Yeah. So when it was originally founded, it was Mende people coming together to say, okay, the embassy, because at that time the APC was in governance. Mm -hmm. And because the APC was a governance, Chaka Steven was not willing to render help to Mende people who were dying here. Uh -huh. And the embassy was not giving the help that so they needed. So you have to find a way to so take care of So the Mende people had to come together to say, we have to take care of our own. Yes. But today it's a new Tegloma where we encourage everyone. Um, for example, I am not 100% Mende myself. My father is from the north. So I, my father is actually a Limba guy and my mother is a Mende. So I cut across, I'm a, I'm a Sierra Leonean. I don't actually relate to one <laughs> tribe because I don't want my parents to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's also good for politics. It's also good as a leader that you can, uh, you can um, actually cut across. So what's the meaning of Tegloma? Is it, an, I think it's a, it's a native. Uh, it's a native Mende language. Name. It means mm. that we're moving forward. Ah. Yes, so that's why the slogan for Tegwama is forward always and never backwards. Ah, for moving forward. Moving In forward. my layman understanding of the Mendil language, I always, I always thought it was, I don't even know what I thought it was. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I thought it was. But that is really, really amazing. So. Let's talk about you being the female president. Are you the first female president of Tegloma? Or I am not the, the first youngest? female president, but okay. the youngest. Okay, all right. But um, I've also known that there have been many years of male predominance as far as the, the leadership of that organization. How, were, how are you able to pierce through and get all of those people, both male and female, to support you? Well, honestly speaking, Africa as a whole, it doesn't matter where you're from whether you're from Ghana, whether you're from Sierra Leone or Liberia, Africa as a whole, we have an issue when it comes to female leadership. Okay. Um, Africa is Africa. That's what I always tell people because most of the men are not willing to put women in positions of making decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I know this firsthand as a female politician in Sierra Leone. So because of that, in Tegloma, what I did was I cajoled people and told them, I am your niece. You guys are my aunties and my uncles. uncles. <laughs> so because you're my aunties and my uncles, you, it's time for you to sit back and let us, the young people, do the job for you. Retire now. You know, so I think when people voted for me, they didn't really vote for me because of my age. Mm -hmm. They voted for me because of my message, okay. because of the promises I made. And I said, okay, you guys are not having fun. All of our money that we donate as members are going towards burials. Can we do something so we can take a cruise or we can have some fun and we can spend it on ourselves and just bring some laughter to ourselves. So. That so was why people voted something. for me. Oh, and then also I have a passion for children. So I appealed to the parents that I would bring fun for your kids. It is about time your kids come to Taglama meetings. They're not just sitting there. They're not learning anything, but to want to come and be a part of the organization. I think that's very key because um, I went to a program recently for the Middle East and I was amazed at the kids 
understood their culture. They knew what certain things meant. And I think that doing that, handing over that legacy so that we don't leave a generational gap is very, very important. And thank you for doing that. And so is that what inspired you to create the B. Rose Children's? You're also the CEO of B. Rose Children's Foundation. So B. Rose Children's Foundation is a passion I probably have since I was a little girl. Okay. Um, as a little girl growing up in Bo, I have always had kids behind me. My house is always that house where all the children come to eat. Yeah. Or if you're looking for your grandchild, you can find them at my <laughs> house. <place. laughs> so I have always been fond of children since I was a baby. And I always would have this school where I had a cane and I was teaching kids in my house mm -hmm. how to read the ABCs. Mm -hmm and things like that so but as the years have gone by i see myself to be very fortunate because i came to the u.s at a very early age okay um and because i did that but i go back to africa every year for my birthday and for the past five years i've actually celebrated my birthdays at different orphanages where i spend my birthday with the kids and i feed them and i donate toys to them and I said, you know what? There has to be more to just doing this for one day. I need to be able to do it endlessly and yeah. be able to give back. Mm -hmm. And B Rose, really what B Rose is, is like be me. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what, just because you're an orphan does not mean you cannot be motivated. You cannot achieve the things in life that you need to achieve. Of course, yes. Go ahead. So, um... Coming here at an early age, I really did not have my parents with me. So I was forced to drive myself to succeed. And that's what B. Rose is all about, motivating these kids and giving them a reason to want to do more with their lives. That's very, very key. That's very, very key. And thank you very much for doing that. So between um, Tegloma and B. Rose, what does Rosalind want to achieve? What, what, what is that thing that you want to achieve? <sighs> I really cannot say there's one thing I want to achieve because for me, if I could ask God to give me one thing, it would probably be to save the world <laughs> and make everybody come to America. Um, but I would probably say I want to work with children. Mm -hmm. In the long run, I want to be able to put smiles on their faces and be able to just give them a reason to want to do more with their lives a reason to want to do more so this is where we are going to take a short break and we will be right back with rosalind bangura the president and uh, of tegloma organization in washington dc and also the ceo of b rose organization we'll be right back don't touch the dial this is this time Africa. Instead of fighting each other, we can promote women issues instead of our party colors. That's right. So, so. Oh. okay. One, please. Do I have a minute to clear my throat? Please. It doesn't laugh when he's joking.
We are back with Rosalind Bangura, the president of the Tegloma organization in Washington, D.C. But this time in this segment, we're going to be looking at Rosalind, the politician. And so Rosalind happens to be the, you used to be the national women's leader for PMDC in Sierra Leone and also uh, leader, vice president of the women's wing of the All Political Parties Association. Tell me about the drive. What is this drive that is taking you not only to organizations but also to politics? Well, I think the politics was there first okay. um, before the organization. Um, in Sierra Leone, as a woman, I just feel men cannot make decisions for us. We don't have enough women in politics and men do not understand the issues that women face on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So as women, if we want to make a difference, then we have to get involved in politics. And then we have to make decisions that affect women. For example, a man doesn't know what happens to my body as a woman. So you cannot go to parliament and make issues on birth control because you don't know what happens to my body if I have to take that. Um, so I just thought that if I needed to make a difference, I have to go into politics. I mean, let me tell you one thing. I'm a political animal and everybody who knows me knows that. If you don't know yet, we'll know it now. And I just believe that it's time that women sit at the table and make decisions themselves. Where it's time to get off the menu <laughs> and uh, we can talk. And so one of the things that I do is to empower women so they can be in political decision making on the table, sitting down and speaking for themselves. Because um, it's just like when we talk about Africa. I think Africa can speak for itself. It's been a while that people have been making decisions for us, but it's time that we can make decisions for ourselves. That's it's very true. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Um, but Sierra Leone, unfortunately, I will have to say that we're probably still behind um, compared to other countries like Nigeria, like oh, yeah. Ghana, where mm -hmm. you have a lot more. Like I traveled to um, Uganda mm -hmm. and I was able to talk to some parliamentarians there under APWA when I was um, the vice president of all political party women's association. But I think our problem as women politicians is us, the women ourselves. I, was about I to don't say. think it's the men. I think it's we, the women. Um, because there's a lot of issues we need to address within ourselves as women to be able to promote more women in politics. Do you think that women support each other? No, they don't. All right. I just wanted to, to get it clear. And why not? Why, why not? What, what do you think the issue is? I mean, talking, let's, let's bring it down to Sierra Leone. What's your observation? I mean, this is just generally. Well, actually, women of, of the world have the same issues when it comes to politics. Mm. Um, being that I've been being in politics, I've been able to travel around the world and I've been able to talk to a lot of women and I've been to a lot of countries where political women, we all go through the same issues. Oh, yeah. The jealousy, the backbiting, the um, man who comes between the two women yeah. and create chaos so that another woman will not support another woman. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, these are just a few of the issues in Sierra Leone and all of Africa. You know, if you talk to a Nigerian woman, she is going to tell you the same issues she faced. Also, for us in Sierra Leone, we don't have the resources. Most of the women don't have the capital. The, uh, the independence. Yeah, they don't have what it takes. They don't have the financial support. Mm -hmm. They want to do something, but they don't have the necessity to be able to bribe people in the village because what we have to realize is when we go and decide we want to call people to a town hall meeting they're not going to leave they're going to the farm to get their daily bread to come and sit in a town hall meeting unless you give them money so that those are the reasons why women don't succeed in politics I think that generally, um, I was speaking to somebody about diaspora. I'm the president of Diaspora International Platform. So one of the things that I try to imbibe in the people's minds is that until we are socio-economically empowered, it's going to be difficult for us to, to translate our message. Because when we go back to Sierra Leone, for instance, and we want to do something, we have to have the economic power so that we're not begging anybody a hundred dollars or not well we can speak because our pocket can speak for us so do you think that is something that probably tegloma other organizations like diaspora international platform 
probably even Africa today and other women organizations can take on just um, a training training session because they, we've heard about women empowerment, women, but I think it's when we back it up with economic. Well, economics play a big role. Like I said, I was in Sierra Leone for six years and um, with APWA, the UN actually was sponsoring us to be able to push the 30% quota for women. Yeah. Unfortunately, that never passed in parliament. We worked hard, 50-50. Why? The, all the women groups, yeah, we remember. all came together to push this. And we were still not able to succeed because we had men who just did not want that 30% quota. So at the end of the day, it died down. And that was the end of that story. But even if you empower the woman, it has to go more than just empowering them mm -hmm. because you have the men are on the higher up. Yeah. They're the ones that make the final decisions. And if they're not willing, a lot of times I tell people, I said, well, sex is going to be another thing that plays a role because some of these men want to actually use sex to be able to deter you from doing what you to need to do. To silence you, to silence so, your yeah. quest. And because of that, some people just say, okay, I'm not going to deal with it. Yeah. You know, and then for us women that are in politics, everybody thinks, the norm is narare gyal, mm. you know, meaning you're a prostitute just because you're a woman in politics. They automatically think because you're a woman and you're in politics in our culture, you're a prostitute. Yeah, but so um, I think it's the lack of knowledge. <laughs> it's a lack of unawareness and the lack of education. Right. Because when you are educated and you know what you want, you can stand the ground. We're not saying that we don't need the men, are we? No, we're saying that. All of us together is what make a country whole and is what uh, the, we can all put our decisions and our minds together so that at the end of the day, our countries like Sierra Leone become what it's supposed to be. We, people can now, our kids can now grow up, the youth can grow up and see a female here and a male here. Do you have any political amb ambition for Sierra Leone? Well, time will tell. Um, <laughs> between B Rose and what I'm doing with my personal stuff, we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Well, let time tell because I know that I can see that. What will you tell your younger self, Rose? I know you're still young, but what, what is it that maybe you would say to your, your younger self, Rosaline? Like your, your teenage self. Oh my goodness, my teenage self What would be self this message? <laughs> okay. Um, for me, I always like to think a woman can do anything a man can do. Mm -hmm. And um, I would tell probably my teenage self, go for anything that you dream of. If you want to become president, you work hard, you do what it takes, and you go for it. Do not let anybody stop you from achieving the goals that you want to achieve in life, especially because you're a woman. The only thing that can stop you in life is you. Yes. But if you keep believing in you and step and take in one day at a time, especially going through every open door, no door is too small. No door is too small. Then you can make it in the future. I love that. I love that. I live by those principles. My philosophies is what I wake up to every morning and sleep on it every night. So I really believe in it. So what's the future for Tegloma? Any events coming up? What's the plan? Well, right now, um, Tagloma, Washington, D.C. is getting ready to take the children to Disney World. Some oh. of these children may never get an opportunity to go to Disney World. And this was actually part of my campaign promise that I wanted to take the children to Disney World and put some fun in them. You know, we also have some activities planned all around. Um, we have our Tagloma annual picnic that is a free picnic for the whole community and the entire African platform um, and then we have our fundraising so we do different things um, during the year well let's know how we can be a part of it and of course Africa today this time Africa we can always assist you in doing that so I want to ask a question what is it that will happen to Roslyn that will say aha this is it I've got it <laughs> what would be? What, what will it be? I know I always take people by surprise on that. But what will it be? What would be your a aha moment? Your for aha me? moment for you. Um, I honestly, Matilda, I don't think there's any more aha moment for me. I think God has been so good to me. Great. Um, and because God has been so good to me, I'm always content with where I am in my life at this point. Um, 
but I would like to do aha moment to people that are less fortunate mm. than I have been. That's very good. That's very good. So tell us a little bit about the real estate. I know we've talked about Rose, the activist, Rose, the politician. So let's see, Rose, the, the real estate woman, the money. That's where the money is. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, real estate I've been doing actually for over 25 years. I started in Georgia and I now have my license here in uh, Maryland. Oh, great. But um, for me, real estate is great. I love the fact that I can give somebody a home and they're happy with it. But I think the foundation has taken away from me putting so much focus on the real estate. Oh, okay, that's very good. So what do you think the diaspora should be talking about? And I know I spoke to you, we're gonna get you on a panel of women, probably also men, who are gonna be talking about the way forward for African politics. Do you think that it is time I know I've not heard of it, but do you think it is time for somebody probably in the diaspora to be leading one of the African countries? Well, the thing of it is, even though I think it is definitely time, I don't think Africa as a whole is ready, ready. to ready, yeah. to accommodate us. Yeah. Because a lot of times when we as African Africans go back home and we're ready to do things like that, they don't embrace us. Um, and we are looked at as a threat. And so because of that, we don't get the support that we need. So we end up spending money and spending money and, and money. coming back and empty. then coming back frustrated <laughs> because people will tell you, oh, yes, we support you. We're going to vote for you. They will use your money and still not vote for you. So I think for anyone who really wants to run for office, uh, government office in Africa, as a whole, you need to be on the ground with the people. You need to know what the people's problems are. You cannot just leave America today and get to Sierra Leone tomorrow and say, oh, I want to run for president. It just doesn't work like that. It doesn't work. You have to be there. You have to know the trials of the people. You have to talk to that 15 year old girl who walks 15 miles to work every day mm -hmm. and gets raped along the way. You have to know the issues of the people. I mean, I can't agree with you more because I have gone through that myself. But I think also that if we begin to bridge the gap, because some people came here to the uh, first world country, if you want to say, or developed country, so that they can be educated. Some of us came here without our will, of course. Some, I came here because there was a war, all right? I used to work for the president of the country, but I came here because there was war. But I would like to go back at some point and take my knowledge probably even just my journalism that I do. I used to do it in Sierra Leone. If I could take that back to assist, does it have to be with a ruling party? When will Africans be ready, especially Sierra Leone, because we're talking about that, be ready to say, you don't have to be APC, uh, what do you call it? SLPP. I'm so neutral that I don't even remember the names. But you don't have to be to make a good contribution to your country? Well, I think what one is it going thing, to take? I would have to commend the young people of Sierra Leone now. I must say that a lot of the young people are not waiting for government intervention. Good. I think a lot of the young people have started doing their own thing mm -hmm. and putting businesses out there without waiting for the government to give them a job. Mm -hmm. So I think all of us need to do the same thing and okay. have the same mindset. Mm -hmm. For me, I have businesses in Sierra Leone mm -hmm. that I just don't depend Correct. on the government on. I have my boutique, I have my um, internet cafe that employ people. All of us need to do that. That's right, that's right. But I'm just saying, just embracing all of that. One last well, word to the viewers. Time. <laughs> One last word to the viewers. Well, Africa is ours and we have to take care of it. We have to make sure we go and give back to Africa because we have no other place to go. America is not our home. We come here to get an education, we come here to empower ourselves, and we need to all go home and give to the people of Africa. We need to all go back home and give back to the people of Africa because this place is not home, but your place is where you come from, back to your roots. This is where we drop the curtain today. We have been speaking with Rosalind Bangura, the president of Tegloma um, organization right here in Washington, D.C., a woman of many hearts. It's been a very interesting topic, and we will continue this discussion. You are listening to This Time Africa right here on Africa Today. Please, if you want to watch us, go to YouTube, www. Afri africtoday.com oh my god i'm so excited that i'm bubbling today um 
Go up to www.africtoday.com, watch us, uh, you can look also at uh, Twitter, you can also look at us on Facebook Live, we're on Facebook Live. These are the discussions that we're going to be having in the diaspora. We're going to be talking about women, great minds, we're going to be talking about business, business entrepreneurs, we're going to be looking at different countries in Africa and see how the diaspora can merge together and create a viable, viable uh, 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 group so that we can assist our governments also back home in Africa. This is how we do it right here on This Time Africa. It's been great to speak with you, Rosalind. Thank you so much. And I you hope that you will come again. Me. <laughs> I hope that you will come again and we're going to be talking up with Women with Heels. Oh, Women okay. with Heels is going to be... A, that should be an easy one. It's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Women with Heels, culture, beauty, um, different businesses that you're doing here and how we can assist you. This is This Time Africa. See you next time.